Hello. Well, that's a pariah. There's a great word everybody should know. Pariah. Kind of like a, a demon. You could smell the sulfur and you avoid it. You ever get that uh, that intuition when you uh, talk with somebody or even get close to somebody? You don't even have to say a word. You can kind of feel the aura that's coming off of them. And of course, I hate to use the word aura because it kind of besmacks of uh, the New Age movement and crystal rubbers and white lighters. <laughs> People say, well, I've got this on my my selenite tower on my table, and like it has any major significance. It was just really, really cheap and pretty, and it's got this little multicolored light underneath it. So I'm not trying to um, invoke the New Age uh, movement or the people that are behind that. I have got no connection to any of that stuff. I've um, been debating most of my life, especially topics that I'm an expert on. A few of the topics, of course, that um, I'm the foremost expert on, like the term and its context and its usage, uh, discussion on field theory, metaphysics, various topics therein. Things that, to me, are an immediate rejection that I consider somebody a pariah. You can kind of feel somebody out and suss somebody out. and They'll ultimately be a drain, and you should never take their advice on anything, no matter smart or even unintelligent they may be, where you can actually immediately judge somebody. There's people that actually can't, and there's a little list of these. I like to go over these. And I love to make unique videos on this topic, people that actually engage in these things. I, I consider them to be a pariah. I basically shut them off from my life. Of course, emotions are good for a family, you know, relationships, you like your cat and your dog. You know, be emotional about artwork and listening to music. You know, emotions are great. You know, somebody watches a, a tear-jerking movie and they get emotional and cry, fine. That has its place. But people that actually bring emotions into intelligent discussions, and this is a serious issue uh, these days, especially so in the past 15, 20 years. People, their entire lives are dictated by emotions rather than facts and logic. Um, I'm not saying be a Vulcan. You know, of course, Vulcans don't exist. It's supposedly, you know, this alien entity, alien uh, species that uh, is hyperlogical all the time. They never display emotions. Emotions are good, and they're great for creativity and certain aspects of productivity. But when people actually introduce emotions into facts, empirical evidences, and so forth, these people are a pariah to me. You may agree or disagree, but I'm telling you uh, several uh, things where in which I would completely reject a person, either a discussion with them or any notion of an intelligent discussion or debate with them, or ever talking with them again in the future. Um, it's far better to be right than liked. Most people don't live that way. Their whole life revolves around being liked and to me that's just like one of the most one of the easily one of the most repulsive things I can think of I've debated people and they'll resort to ad hominem it's like well you're a fat bald and tattoos like you know this is true but maybe we could get back to actually discussing the topic which you seem to know absolutely nothing about we're trying to, to make a determination based upon evidence boom 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 they're always trying to throw you off the tracks people that do this also too are a pariah I uh, reject them, I avoid them, I want nothing to do with them, I will never talk with them or have discussions with them because I've sussed them out. People like this usually don't grow out of it, uh, especially at a certain age. Um, and I'm say, well, this is being really critical. It's not, actually. Um, I actually get along fine with like the most unintelligent people um, that you could possibly imagine. I mean, people that don't know how to read and write you know, as long as they're true people and, you know, they stick with truth and, you know, they're, you know, they lead a, a life of natural order. I don't care how smart or uh, unintelligent someone is. I mean, these are not basis of criteria for, you know, reject, uh, rejection or acceptance of somebody. Um, I have this happened to me many countless times in debating others. Well, oh, you're this fat, bald, you know, so-and-so. You know, you look like, uh, what do they say I look like? Uncle Fester or uh, Andrew Zimmer. It's like, you know, this is true. But maybe we can get back to discussing the topic since that was the point that we're trying to make here. Another uh, fact is someone will uh, care about tone and even worse, tell you about tone. You ever heard someone say, I don't like the tone of your voice. This is a person that you should reject. It is an extreme character flaw. You've heard this before. I've heard it before many, many times. People that care about, you know, if it's a family 
member and like you're getting huffy with somebody it's okay you know i don't like your tone you know you're you're connected your brother your sister i don't know any brothers or sisters family member um your child or something then someone could talk about tone because you have to live with them you know they're a relationship of yours anybody else work whatnot out there they say i don't care about your tone or i don't like your tone this is a person that does not care about facts if people listen to tone they are I hate to use the word evil, but they are, um, they're intellectually evil. They are intellectually evil. Uh, they care not about what you said or the truth of what it contains or doesn't contain, rather how you said it. People that care about tone are intellectually evil. They just flat out are. I reject these people. I don't communicate with them. I don't talk with them. I don't email with them. I reject them completely. They are nothing other than a vortex, the sucking vortex of, uh, of uh, life force energy and stress because they don't care about truth, facts, logic, logic, and wisdom. I reject people that talk about tone or care about tone. Sophistry. I don't know if you know what sophistry is. You can look up sophistry. It's one of those things that uh, you could suss somebody out really easily. Um, they never care about getting to the point. You know, uh, statement, uh, evidences, uh, facts, logic, and reason. They engage in sophistry. Uh, the ancient poly for it was called an eel wriggler. Like you'd hold an eel and it just wiggle back and forth. You couldn't nail it down, a person down on anything. It's like, let's have a discussion about, uh, you know, this. You know, is it this, this, or this based upon that evidence? They will wiggle and squirm. I mean, they'll do anything to have... Uh, to uh, get you to agree with them by not actually talking about the facts, the evidences, the reasoning behind something, for something. Sophistry. The other one that's used a whole lot um, is authority. By the way, in a logical debate, there's no such thing as an authority. There are novices and there are experts. There's a whole spectrum in between, but people are, well, who are you? You don't have a PhD in physics. I don't need a PhD in physics to tell you that you can't tell me what a field is. Yeah, you, I don't need a PhD in physics, you know, to state the obvious fact that you uh, teach uh, uh, breaking the law of conservation of energy because you think light is an emission. And then it speeds back up after it leaves glass or water. You know, I don't need, you know, I don't need a piece of paper hanging on the wall to point out the obvious fact that you are blatantly ignorant on discussing field theory, metaphysics. Who are your authority? <laughs> reject these people they don't care about the truth they are intellectually evil another person is uh someone about consensus or a bandwagon well there's every scientist on earth thinks uh, that electrons and photons exist was, oh a bandwagon fallacy so you've got a bunch of unintelligent people that are sniffing each other's uh, flatulence and agreeing with each other. So that's a, that's a bandwagon fallacy. Consensus. People that look for consensus. You're not interested in facts, logic, and wisdom, truth, or what demonstrably follows. They're, they care about... That's a herd mentality. Bah, you know, where are all the sheep congregated at in uh, the realm of discussing this topic? Science, field theory, metaphysics. Where are all the sheep congregating? That's where I'm going. Not meaning me, them. Meh, where are the sheep congregated? There we go, consensus. You know, all the sheep are over there. Meh. Reject these people. Another one on uh, sophistry is question dodging. You ask them the direct, demonstrable, non-trick questions. They will dodge it. You know, like the White House is really good for that. That's actually what they're taught to do. You ask them a direct question, and they'll tell you that the sky is blue and it's hot tomorrow. It's like, what? That has nothing to do with what I talked about. Dodge, squiggle, worm, question dodging. People that question dodge. These are people that are intellectually evil. Censoring. Censoring is a huge, huge, huge thing, especially these days. The more they don't want you to talk about it or know about it, the more you should be interested in talking about it and knowing about it. You know? Make like a hole in the water be a funnel and a vortex for all the things these people don't want you to know and there's a reason why they don't want you to know it it's not for your own good they don't want you to know it because it is for your own good 
They don't want you knowing about it because they want to hold something over you. Your ignorance is their power. Never forget that. Your ignorance is their power. Not ignorant anymore, their power goes away. There are certain cultures and places where they purposefully keep people ignorant and stupid. So they can keep the power over you. When you remove the ignorance and the stupidity, their power vanishes. And they ain't going to have that. So This whole tone thing is the one thing that uh, despises me most out of this entire list that I really reject people for. I mean, I reject them flat out and permanently. It's not what you said, it's how you said it. Like I said, it's less it's a family member. These people are intellectually evil. Another one is appeal to charisma. Well, who would you believe you? You're a fat, bald, tattooed guy on the internet. What do you know? This is a, sl a different take on the appeal to authority. Well, I've got two million followers on Instagram. There's uh, there's several YouTube videos. I'm not going to... Channels, excuse me. I'm not going to mention their name. They make uh, videos on uh, field theory and physics. It's just the most ridiculous poppycock twaddle and nonsense I've ever heard. Um... Well, I'm, I'm a handsome guy. I make, uh, I've got two million followers. So what? Everything you say is ignorant nonsense, easily refuted. Well, I'm not going to listen to you. I can't hear you over the roar of my two million followers. <laughs> you need to identify these things in other people. When you do, you can stop wasting your breath on them. It's like if you can't have an intelligent debate, it's over with. I got the facts and the reasoning behind me and the evidences and the citations, depending on what the topic is. You can't debate it. You're only interested in tone or you base everything upon emotions. You're engaging in sophistry, appeals to authority, bandwagon fallacies, i.e. consensus, question dodging, censorship, which is a really nasty one, especially these days. You need to understand these things in other people and understand that they are evil. It doesn't mean they're sitting there wringing their hands and, you know, they've got skeletons in their basement, that kind of evil, but they're fundamentally intellectually evil. They're to be avoided. They're not worth wasting your breath on. You dodge them. You ignore them. You give no yield to them in anything they want from you. I will not yield. The answer is no. No. The answer is no. You have no authority over me. You have no power over me. You know, nothing you say supports your position. I am not ignorant. I know what I'm talking about. I have the facts, logic, and evidences behind me. You have nothing. You're trying to censor me. You care about tone rather than facts. Tell you what, when people care about tone rather than facts, logic, and evidences, they are intellectually hardcore evil. That's your feeling, you fat tattooed monkey. No, it's a fact. They are intellectually evil. You should identify these things in other people. Um, I won't say exactly what, but I'll let you guess. I was recently talking to someone who was wearing, I think, a few face diapers, and they said, follow the science! Follow the science! <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the porosity of that uh, piece of thing you're wearing. Let me, let me do it here. Let me do it right. <clears throat> follow the science! Follow the science! It's like, no, that's incorrect. The porosity of that thing versus... And then follow the science! I don't like the way you're saying it. Oh, you don't like the facts and evidences and logic that I'm stating. You just don't like the way I said it. So the way I said it is important. But the facts, logic, and evidences that I stated are not important. Yeah, it's all about what, not what you said. It's about how you said it. That is such intellectual evil. These are children. I don't mean children necessarily by their age, but they are children. It's like, oh, you're just a little child. Oh, a little baby. Let me change your diaper for you. <laughs> I've had a lifetime to recognize these people. I can spot them really, really quickly, and they, they just get dismissed for what they are. It's like the old statement, children should be seen but not heard. It's like, I see you over there. You know, as soon as you decide to step up, give me facts, logic, and wisdom, you stop caring about tone, you stop caring about emotions, you stop engaging in sophistry and appeals to authority and bandwagon fallacies, i.e. consensus, then we can have an intellectual debate and we can get to the heart of the matter and arrive at conclusions based upon evidences, logic, facts, wisdom, so on and so forth. They can't do it! 
They don't care about this. People that don't care about facts, logic, and wisdom and evidences are to be dismissed. You just dismiss them for what they are. They could be old, they could be young, they're just children. Agu. You have some 40, 50, 60 year old person that's just a child. Their entire lives have been run off of the jet fuel of emotions, hyperbole, sophistry, bandwagon fallacies. I don't like your town. I just got done giving you facts, evidences, and reasons, and proofs, and pictures. And the only thing you care about is tone. That's right. It's not the facts. You know, I don't care about that. I don't care about facts. I care about your tone. <laughs> These people are so evil. Sorry for the little bit of drama I threw in there. It was just to make you laugh. I don't like drama, actually. I do love a good laugh, though. I love a good laugh. It's really healthy for you to have a good laugh. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely week. It's going to be really hot tomorrow. Like, hot. Hot and hotter than Satan's Speedo tomorrow. 97 degrees. Nice and sunny. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Goodbye. By the way, if you want to contact me or any donation, that's in the description below. Anything is greatly appreciated. Or you can email me. Tell me how much you can't stand me. Whatever makes you happy. I read every comment and I'm an information sponge. Good night.